Hey, it's LEGO Technics Rule, and I am here with the biggest creation I have ever made. I mean, just look how big this thing is. If we do some quick maths, turns out that this thing is just about three feet long. But what is it? This is a recreation of the Bridge arcade game. I have to mention that the original concept for the bridge came from LEGO Genie 97. Anyway, the object of the game is to get the balls to cross the bridge. A ball will come out of one of four of these holes, and you need to get the ball over the bridge to the other side without it falling in the middle. If you successfully make one to the other side, you get a candy, in this case, Starburst. A quarter is needed to play, and all other coins are rejected. Now, since you've probably seen a million videos like this, I'm just going to speed this part up. So once a quarter is inserted, you can get things started by pushing the big red button. And don't deny it, who doesn't like pushing big red buttons? Anyway, here's a 59 second montage of me playing the game. So while you're watching, here's a little bit about how this game works. You get three balls. If you miss the third ball, the game ends. However, if you make the third one, it continues to give you balls and candy until you miss one. Alright, I'll stop blabbering at you for a little bit. Go ahead and enjoy the rest of the montage. Did you enjoy it? Good! Now it's time for me to show you some features and how it works. The first feature is a tray on the left side that can be opened to get the quarters out. The second feature is coin rejection and here's how it works. Coins smaller than a quarter just fall through the hole in the middle of the blue piece. Another thing you can see from this angle is that the touch sensor is being activated from a 90 degree angle. I needed to do this because the touch sensor was too long and if I mounted it vertically, it would hit that yellow wall. Moving on from the front of the machine, here's the back of it. But for now, let's focus on the red and blue mechanism shown here. The red one is responsible for dropping balls and the blue one is responsible for dropping candy. After the balls are released, they need to go through the field of obstacles on this white board. The mechanisms powering the spinning yellow beams and the alternating black beams are linked with the chain. This allows just one motor to power both modules instead of two, twice the efficiency. The wave of yellow beams on the top was a little trickier. Since it took a lot of force to turn, it needed its own motor. And I don't know if you can see it here, but I was struggling quite a bit to turn it by hand. So here's what powers the board. This front motor powers the chain assembly and this back motor powers the wave of yellow beams. I also added clutch gears to the motors just in case anything seized up for one reason or another. They would just slip instead of exploding the whole gearbox throwing gears everywhere. After the ball makes it through the obstacle course, it still needs to cross the bridge. Now from what I've seen, this is a new mechanism for the bridge because most of what else I've seen on YouTube works like this. All the other bridge games I've seen on YouTube have the rack move and the pinion, which is the gear, stay put. In my case, the rack stays put and the pinion moves. The major advantage to this setup is that since the rack stays in place, it doesn't come out the sides of the machine like you see here. Anyway, there are two routes the balls can take once they reach the bridge, over or under. So yeah, if you miss the ball, it just falls down and drains. So when the ball does drain, it passes by a flapper which activates an infrared sensor. The infrared sensor then counts it as a loss. I used an infrared sensor instead of a color sensor because the color sensors seem to have trouble seeing fast moving objects. 
If you make a ball over the bridge, something a little more interesting happens. There's a color sensor under this white piece that, when it sees a ball, it gives you another ball and a piece of candy. It also disables the infrared sensor's ability to count the ball as a loss. So, either route the balls take, they end up in the same place. A vertical conveyor belt with powerful neodymium magnets attached to it take the balls back up to the dispenser. Here's how the candy is dispensed, and the balls work the same way except it's a 2x2 instead of a 3x3 like you see here. Last but not least is the ball distributor. This thing randomly decides which of the four holes to release the ball from. I saved it to last because this is by far the most complicated part of the whole machine. So what I did here is transplant it onto another base plate to show you how it works better. I'm also going to put a sheet of glass in the front of it so the balls don't fall out. So I'm going to turn this white gear on the back all the way to the left. You can see that the ball is directed out the third hole. Now if I spin it a tenth of a rotation to the right, you can see that the ball is directed out the fourth hole. If I rotate it two more tenths to the right, you can see that it comes out the first hole. And finally, turning it all the way right will direct it out the second. And here's what the gears look like in the back if you were curious, which I'm sure you were. That's about it for this one, however I do have a quick update if you want to hear it. As the well-known chemistry YouTuber Nile Red once said, On a bit more of a personal note, projects like these kind of destroy my soul. So what this means is I want to make some smaller projects here and there instead of these big giant machines. Anyways, besides that, that's about it for this one. Thanks for watching.